The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now. Bartholomew Wise is now. <laughs> well, dude, do not. If they are new, they, they are going to think that's my real name. It's probably. It is not Bartholomew. It is Buck. <laughs> My real birth given name. Let's is see the Buck. driver's license. Come on, let's see. B U. I don't have it on me. B U. Oh, likely story. <laughs> Wise. W I S C. That's what happens when you're born in Texas with drunk parents. You get <laughs> Buck. That's exactly what happens. Anyway, welcome to 10X Owners Live. This is such a fantastic night because we get the chance to engage and interact live with business owners that want to 10X their business, that want to absolutely crush their goals, that don't understand the definition of complacency. We love the business owners that come here every Tuesday night because we share something in common. And that is that we aren't average. Do we agree? How many of you agree we are not average? And that is why we're here. Because we want to blow our pipelines up. We want to build and nurture better relationships, convert more, and drive more sales. So I'm going to do a quick introduction. If you are new, my name is Buck Wise. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Cardone Ventures, where we help business owners like you scale your business personally professionally and financially, the trifecta of scaling personal, professional, and financial. We've done it with hundreds of businesses across hundreds of different verticals. And now we're here to help you do the same thing. And that's why we meet every single Tuesday because we wanna give an opportunity to build a relationship with you. We wanna hear the challenges that you're having. We wanna hear the break points that your business is at. I'm at 5 million and I can't get to 10. I'm at 20 and I can't get to 50. So my background is in traditional and digital. So I started in television and radio and from television and radio, I moved into owning my own agency. I sold that agency to the world's largest agency, WPP. I worked with massive brands, Nike, Starbucks, Google. That's just naming a few of some of the big brands that I've worked on major, major marketing campaigns. So. I've worked with small businesses. I've owned small businesses. I understand the struggle when you're up late doing taxes, wondering if your first year, if you even made money. I understand when you hire your first, Edgar knows, he's shaking his head, he's been there. When you have to hire your first employee like Michael did, when you have to fire the first employee, like I know Rachel did, because Rachel spoke on last Tuesday. She talked about people problems, how to inspire and engage your people. And so as a marketer, a lot of times you get into this owner's dilemma where you believe there's a magic button where you can just hit it and flow is supposed to come to your business. Revenue is supposed to increase. And tonight we're going to talk about building the perfect pipeline. We're going to talk about building the perfect pipeline and how to nurture relationships to then close and transact, to convert. But we're going to do so in a way where we connect the dots between not just marketing, but people, because you need both in order to succeed. I want to introduce really quickly Heather Block, who's with us as well, our Vice President of Professional Development, who's with us, Education Content. Heather, are you on tonight? Did we give you access? You know I am. I'm right here with you. There she is. Heather is a longtime Brandon Dawson employee. How long have you been with our CEO, Brandon Dawson? Almost 13 years. Wow. Wow. So if you think about how do I get Brandon Dawson's brain, that's how you get it. Heather has access. She's got a complete download of everything and anything uh, Brandon knows and teaches. And so she works with us very closely on developing the educational content and helping growing and scaling your people. And so tonight, Heather and I are going to kind of go back and forth. I'm going to give you a little bit. I'm going to give you just a tidbit of data that's going to help you drive more impact with your pipeline. And Heather and I are going to talk about how you need people aligned and inspired in order to actually execute appropriately. Because me giving you technique and strategy is only going to go as far as great as the people that you have working for you can go. 
That's it. Think about that. All the strategy in the world doesn't matter if you don't have the right people in place and they're not motivated appropriately. So I want to make that clear. So, but first, let's do some let's do some questions and answers. I want to go back and forth. I like getting data. So how many of you currently, let's start with this. How many of you currently are doing over a million? If you're doing under a million, say under. If you're doing over a million in annual revenue, say over. Over a million, over a million, over a million. Couple unders, couple unders. That's okay. If you're in startup phase or you're just cracking the first million, that's fine. You're still going to be able to leverage a lot of this information tonight to help grow your business quickly. Speed to market is the key when it comes to marketing. Okay, of those, of those over, how many of you are over 5 million? Say over if you're over 5 million in annual revenue. Emilio says way under. Mads says over. Natasha Nazish says over. Trista, over, over, over. Michael says no. Okay, how many of you are over 10 million? Say over. I want to see all of our 10 million and over annual businesses. Where are you? And we're talking about revenue. We could be talking about profit, but for right now, let's just see how much volume of financial revenue that you're doing. Over 10, over 10. We've got a couple big ones. Mr. Lagomarsino's with us tonight. We know he's doing well over 10 million in annual revenue. So we've got some, so this is good. It's a good eclectic group. We've got some small businesses, some big businesses. And here's the truth. Everything that we're going to give you tonight is going to help you, whether you're small or big. The other piece of information tonight is I want you to raise your hand if you have questions. You'll see Dr. G already has his hand up. Hit reactions down at the bottom. There's a little button that says reactions. Ask those questions. Raise your hand. This is live. This is the, the reason we like to do this live is we want you to be able to ask your questions. We want you to be able to have context to all of the answers that we're giving. And we want to interact. We want to meet you. If we've never met you before, we want to meet you. So, so why don't we start here? The first key to creating a successful marketing campaign and blowing up your pipeline is what? What is the first P that we all need to understand? The first P, there we are, Omar Sherman. They got to look at your chat right now. For those of you that are alum that know the success of how to create the perfect pipeline, it's in promotion. It's in your ability as the leader either the owner or the senior leader in your organization. It's the accountability on you to promote. You must promote. What happens if you don't promote? Obscurity. What do we know about obscurity? If they don't know you, they can't flow you. I, hear, I, I could hear that. Was that loud and clear? I saw all the mouths moving. That was, man, that was the quietest, loudest thing I've ever heard. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. That's what Grant Cardone always says. They've got to know you. I've been in the room so many times over the last two years with Grant Cardone where people have been able to ask him any question they want. And you know what the number one question is he's always asked? The number one question they ask Grant Cardone, if you could do things differently, Grant, what's the one thing you would do? What's the one thing you would do differently? And what does he say? Man, I would have promoted more. I would have spent more money. That's right, Michael knows. I would have spent all my money. If you look at the amount of money Grant spent in promotion over the last 10 years, and you look at his popularity on Google Trends, literally, he puts his media budget against his popularity on Google Trends. And what happens? The more he spends, what's happening? The more he spends, the more he's known. The more he's known, the more flow he creates. So there's three points to a business cycle. We'll kick things off. This is your first note. The first point of a business cycle is flow. Creating flow to the business. Attention. Awareness. How do you create flow to the business? The question I always ask when we talk about Q&A, the question I always ask any business owner that says, Buck, you're the marketing guy. You work for Grant and Brandon. You can solve my problems. What do I do? I need more business. I need transactions. I need more revenue. What do I do? The first question I ask is, did you promote today? What did you promote today? 
David, George, Larry, Ryan. Let's have a moment of self-reflection, guys. We're in this together. I'm not punishing you right now. We're in this together, but let's have some self-reflection. Have some honesty. How many of you have promoted tonight? In the chat, if you've promoted today, David, I know David White promotes every day. You know why? He tags me in half his promotion. I always say that. You can tag me on Instagram. I like the accountability. Many of you, when you promote, you're tagging me every day because you want, to, you want me to know. Like if I'm your coach, if I'm your marketing coach, I want to see that you're promoting. I want to see how you're doing. If you tag me, I'll give you tips and techniques on how to promote better. Every day, I have to do it. You must do it. It's your duty. What's your duty? Success. Success is your duty. Yeah, but I don't want to promote. Well, then you don't want to succeed. If you don't want to promote, you don't want to succeed. Yeah, but I just hired. Listen, it's not my personality trait. I'm an analyzer, not a driver influencer. It's not. No, 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 no. I don't. I hired Heather Block to do that. She's a huge life of the party. That's her thing. She's comfortable in front of the camera. I just tell Heather to do it. I don't have to do it. Do you see Brandon? Do you see Grant telling Jared and me that we need to promote and they're not going to do it? Do you see them doing that? The same way you can't hire someone to solve your promotion problems. You have to be accountable for your promote. For your promote. Why? Because you have to model Mimic Master. You have to set the example for the rest of your organization. Watch me and how I do it. Once you create that promotion, the profit starts. And then you document the process. This is all part of scaling. All part of scaling. Promote, promote, promote. So that's the first key is always promote. And you don't just promote what you do. You promote why you do it, how you do it, why it's important to you and who you're doing it with. This is the other piece to promoting that just drives me crazy. We're all so transactional. But I just need the revenue. I just need the dollar. You need a relationship is what you, you don't need a dollar. You need a relationship. That's my goal. Somebody asked me in the last marketing workshop, we do these workshops. I don't know if you've heard of them before. If you're brand new, there's a marketing workshop, a finance workshop, and there's a people workshop where we talk about people alignment. And we have these three workshops and in a marketing workshop, I go two days deep on technique. And somebody asked me, Buck, when it comes to your personal brand, not Cardone Ventures, but your personal brand, somebody asked me, they said, what's your strategy from a content pillar standpoint for your personal brand? And how do you delineate between how much you post on one subject versus another subject? And I said, man, for my personal brand, if you follow me on Instagram, it's at about Buck. If you follow me on Instagram, this is my goal. I want to help you. I want to know you. I want to understand you. And I want to bring value to you. And when we develop a relationship, and we will, because I'm going to give you value and you're going to give me value back. The conversion happens. That's the second piece to the cycle, the conversion. So the first piece is flow. The second piece is conversion. That's the second piece. The conversion is going to happen when the relationship is there. And by the way, it happens both ways. There are people who've entered into our network. There are customers who I have personal relationships with who have spent $180,000, $400,000, a million dollars, $2 million, programs, masterminds, workshops. And I've spent that same amount of money in their business. I've got IV guys that come over and give me, you know, my, my vitamin drips. I've got NAD and, and, and all sorts of all sorts of companies that I invest back into. You know, in fact, whenever I need something, the first place I go is somewhere in my Instagram. It's the first, I'm like, who do I have a relationship that does this? I have a need and I'm going to buy from them because I trust them. So that's the key on the conversion. When you get to the second cycle, what is the relationship? I'm saying relationship. What is the real, what's really, what are we talking about? We're talking about trust. Because if we have a relationship, we have trust. And if they trust you, they're going to convert. And that's why relationships are so key. So flow, bringing attention and awareness into the business. Conversion is the exchange of value, the trade of value. 
They needed something, they had a problem, they had a challenge, you have the answer, you have the solution. And you have a relationship where they trust you, which is why you're gonna convert, that's the conversion. Flow and conversion, the two pieces at the beginning of the cycle. Hey, have you ever seen what a million dollars looks like? It looks like this, look at this, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Every single one of your eyeballs right now, I watched, I watched, I watched for it. Not a one of you looked away. I said, look at it. This is what a million dollars looks like. And I've watched every single one of you. I can see you. I got the whole grid up. And I watched Frank's laughing because he knows he got busted, right? That's a tension. Who says that, by the way? Who, who has said that before? Do you know what a million dollars looks like? Grant does that, right? Have you seen Grant on YouTube talking about, right? GC, Uncle G, the master of flow, the master of flow, the master of promotion, a gorilla promoter. Man, he knows his persona so well. He knows us so well. He doesn't need to study. He doesn't need, he doesn't need to go to some college and get a marketing degree. He knows you so well. He gets your attention every single time. He knows how to get your attention. He's the master of flow. But attention alone is not what's going to create conversion. Trust. I got a billion dollars in assets for multifamily. And I'm creating millions of dollars of cash flow for people just like you. That's credibility. That's a relationship. That's trust. That's why something like Cardone Capital is so successful because he doesn't just bring in the attention and the awareness. He actually converts it. And then the last piece, because I want to bring Heather in and talk about accountability and people. The last piece to the cycle, flow conversion and then retention. The experience was so great from flow to conversion, the experience was so great that they're coming back for more retention. Brandon talks about, Brandon Dawson, our CEO, talks about breakpoints in the business. When you hit that two to three, four million in annual revenue, you need at least 60% retention to get past 5 million. And if you're not tracking the data to understand how much is net new cold versus retention, you're never gonna pass those breakpoints. Now, how do we do that? How do we start tracking retention? How do we start tracking exceptional experiences? How do we take that data and turn it into action items so that we can make better decisions in our marketing strategy and drive more flow to our funnels? How do we do that? We do that with exceptional people. We do that by building an organization that is driven by the same purpose. And that purpose must have a cultural relevance that's aligned. And that's what we work on at Cardone Ventures. We don't just help with marketing, sales. We dig deep on people, on hiring, firing, inspiring, aligning. And we work closely on how these things all connect together. So Heather, I I've talked a lot about the cycle and I know we already have questions that are, that are coming up. When we talk about people, like everyone always asks me in a marketing workshop, well, how do you get salespeople to enter the data if it wasn't automated in a landing page? How do you get a salesperson to actually input the data into the CRM? Like, how are they inspired to do that? What would you say, Heather, is hands down the best piece of advice to aligning your people to do the things the business needs to do in order to scale and succeed? Such a great question, Buck. <clears throat> I think that the best thing that you can do is align their goals to the business goals, meaning understanding what inspires your team so that when you create the path to what needs to be done, it can be aligned to something bigger than just the transactional thing like data entry into a CRM. Can, you clarify, can you clarify that, Heather? You're telling me the employees I hired don't want to put the data into the CRM because I want to grow the business to a billion dollars in the next five years. You're telling me that doesn't inspire them. I know that's shocking to hear, but yeah, that's exactly it right there. They're not coming to you because they're excited to do data entry. Just so you know, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not always true. Let's be yeah. honest. There's some people out there that actually enjoy data entry. That is, that is true. But the majority of people, yeah, you're not just hiring data entry specialists. So yeah. So yeah, what, yeah. what Heather's talking about with people alignment is understanding how to inspire the people who work for you 
when you do tell them you want them to model, mimic, and master your promotion, once you get that promotion and that flow down, man, if you could only duplicate yourself, if you could only get others in the organization to do the same thing that you're doing so that they can start to scale and create their own flow into the business. What Heather's talking about is creating a structure around their own personal goals so that as they achieve the company's goals, they in turn are accomplishing their personal goals. Now, what gets really interesting is that you have to discover what their personal goals are. Heather, are there bad ways and good ways to discover employees' personal goals? Well, of course, because this all comes down to what Brandon calls the three T's, transactional, transitional, and transformative. A lot of business owners attack you know, being, uh, having team members from a transactional standpoint, things to do, what they need to do, tasks to complete. It's very transactional and granular in nature. It's not inspiring. And so in order, like, I want to just say like everything that Buck's been talking about is so it's such a remarkable element of the business, meaning we spend so much time and energy as business owners, promoting, creating the strategies, driving the data, making the informed decisions. I mean, Buck is the master and genius behind all of that. And it is one of four pillars of a business, which is what we call the 360. But you have to understand, like, you can put all that energy and effort, and Buck said it, like, you can put all this energy and effort, and you could have the most remarkable strategy in place and plan in place and tactics, and you're promoting on Instagram, you're driving the flow into that funnel that he talks about. But if you don't have the team aligned with converting that flow, then you're literally taking that million dollars he's talking about. And have you ever seen what a million dollars looks like on fire? Because <laughs> that's what happens. You're it's just on fire. fire. It's on fire. I like it. We don't, like don't want to burn a million dollars that way, right? We want it. We want to grow a million dollars. So the point here is that you know, when it comes to your team, there's three ways that we look at engagement and it's through alignment, development, and transition. Can you say that again? I want to make sure one of our team members puts this in the chat. In the chat. Alignment, development, and transition. It's the employee engagement cycle. Just like we do lots of cycles, lots of the things in threes. If you guys have been, uh, you know, in our ecosystem, you know, we do. If you're brand new, you'll learn this about us. But the bottom line is number one is alignment. And this is twofold. This is how you attract amazing people who align to your vision and mission, as well as ensure that your current team is also aligned to your vision and mission. And bottom line there is that, do you have a vision and a mission? So true, such a good point. Um, I would like to take a moment. I want to get into questions here in just a moment, but if you have not promoted today or if you've promoted and maybe not promoted well, I'd like to take two minutes right now and have you. Mm. Promote. I want you to get the phone. Look at that. Look at that. Everybody's grabbing their phone. Grab that phone. I got muscle memory. Camera. Okay. And then hit that video. Go on Instagram, Facebook. Mia likes to go live. She's always tagging me on Facebook live. She's great on Facebook live. Go, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the phone. Let's go. Our friends in Dubai made some noise tonight. We've got our Dubai friends out here tonight. Okay. I want you to promote right now that what you're doing, why you're doing it, attract. Maybe this isn't for a customer. Maybe tonight you're promoting for that next high performer in your organization. Maybe you're promoting tonight to that new partner that's going to help work with you on a new innovative product. Maybe tonight you're promoting for the potential buyer of your business as you exit your business. Maybe they're watching tonight. Maybe they hit the hashtag tonight. These business owners are changing their lives. Look at this right here on 10X Owners Live, learning how to blow up their pipeline, build better relationships so that they can close deals and build their business and scale it to 10X levels. If you wanna join, swipe up. I'm gonna put the link right here. See that? Promote, 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 promote. So we talked a little bit about promotion. We talked about the cycle flow conversion retention, and we talked about alignment of your people so that they can accomplish those goals. Let me get more data points. Let me get more data points. How many employees do you have? If it's zero, put zero. And then how big is the company? How many employees do you have? Full-time, let's go full-time. No contractors, no outsource, no virtuals, full-time. Zero, one, 58, 10, 30, 50, zero, 3, 7, 2, 20, 13, 5, 30, 12, 5, 72, 7. Great. 
This applies to all of you. One full time, just me, two, five, three. So we get really deep at our workshops. I'm going to make this promise to you right now. I'm going to make this promise to you. We are going to help you scale your business, whether it be through your people, through your marketing, or through your financial modeling. We are going to help you scale your business. That is my promise. That is our sole purpose is to help you succeed. If you don't succeed, truly, this business model that we've created with Brandon Dawson and Grant Cardone does not win. It fails. Just getting you to come to this call, getting you to go to an event is not our business model. Our business model is making sure that you explicitly understand what it takes to grow and scale your business and then execute upon that. So my promise to you is that we will help you do that. Let's start with a relationship. Let's start with a relationship. Let's have a call about your biggest challenges and let's talk about which workshop makes the most sense for you. And this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna put a QR code up right now that's gonna allow you to scan it. Pull out your, you already have your camera out. So scan this QR code that you're gonna see on your screen right now. Pull the camera out, tap it. There you go. I'm gonna tap it here on my, whoa, that's a big QR code. All right, here we go, tap it. So once you scan that, you're going to set an appointment. And that appointment is going to connect you with my team, where we're going to do a quick assessment on where you're at, where you need to go, and which workshop. We have these workshops, marketing, finance, and people. You need all three. Without all three, your business is never going to succeed. So we're, we're going to dissect where you're at and where your biggest challenges and pain points are, and we're going to put you into the right workshop. These workshops are $4,997, $4,997, and the value that you get is ridiculous for $4,997. You get massive, massive action that you can take home immediately and start applying to the business. And so there's two dates, Heather. What are the two dates for these workshops that we're going to join and, and create relationships with? All right. So Scottsdale is going to be November 20th and 21st. Okay. And then we'll be hosting a second one in Florida, December 4th and 5th in Miami, in Aventura. Okay. So in the comments, which, which one do you want to go? West Coast or East Coast? Scottsdale yeah, Coast or Coast. Miami? Well, November in Arizona is amazing. It Speak is. No, hey, don't, don't persuade. <laughs> don't persuade. Guys, Miami, Miami is, I mean, Grant always pops in in Miami. So Miami's a great city too. Yeah, but he might come to Arizona. Oh, that's right. He's Actually, he office. did say he was coming to Arizona. He's coming to the new, new office. office. That's right. Okay, never mind. He's coming to Arizona too. So <laughs> what are the dates again? Give the dates again, Heather. November 20th, 21st in Scottsdale. Let's get it in the chat team. And then December 4th and 5th in Aventura. That's right. And you can DM anyone on here with CV. You can DM them and get more details if you need it. I do want to say that if you come to the marketing workshop, before we, it's 526 here in Scott, I'm in Scottsdale right now. Tomorrow morning, I'm in Miami. Tonight, I'm in Scottsdale. Before <laughs> we end, if you've considered that you might need some technical support in marketing, but you haven't quite taken the massive action needed to come to my marketing workshop, I've got a very special offer that I'm going to throw out only to owners live just before six o'clock. And the next, I'm going to answer some questions with Heather. And then the next 20 minutes, I'm going to throw out something very special. So if you haven't done it yet, get ready for this special offer. That's what we call a tease, by the way. It's not a million dollars, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's go to Anthony. We're going to kick some questions off. Anthony, thanks for coming tonight to, to 10X Owners Live. Appreciate you showing up, brother. Hey, thanks for uh, taking me. Uh, my first question would be, what would you, let's see here, do, 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 what would be the best place to market on besides social media? Or is that the best place because it's free? Okay, such a great question, Anthony. Really good question. Let's clear, let's clear a few things up. So the first thing is, if any of you have ever been to a 10X 360, I'm gonna, th oh, this is good. This is gonna be a pop quiz to the alum, okay? The alum that have been to a 10X 360, you are gonna be the teacher right now, ready? How many of you have been to a 360? Put it in the chat. Put 360 in the chat if you've been to a 10X 360. 
360, 360, 360. Okay. Anthony's asking a question. Okay. He's asking, is social better than other platforms? So when we look at the marketing framework that I set up in a 10X 360, what is he asking a question about? This is the Plinko game. What's he asking a question about? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Let's see if we get it right. Anthony, I'm just testing the students right now. Give me, <laughs> I got you. Give me two seconds. Right. One of the pillars, right? Which pillar, Jason? The pressure's on. Which pillar is it? He's asking about digital. Now he mentioned that social was free. So what he's talking about is owned organic social because we all know to reach people on social, it's not free. It's a pay to play platform. There's free social, which is great for search, but you'll never reach anyone for free. Think of this conversion rate. Look at your Instagram right now. I'm gonna look at mine. It's about buck. If you're not following me yet, let's be friends. If we look at about buck, 27,000 followers, okay? 27,000 followers. When I post an image, here's a picture of me grilling with Grant and Brandon from, from the <laughs> holiday weekend. Isn't that great? When I post that image, if I put no paid behind it, less than 2% of my audience sees it. Less than 2%. Okay, why is that? Because Zuckerberg wants me to pay him to reach even the people who already follow me. He's like, yeah, that's great. You have 27,000 followers. You can't reach them unless you pay me. So this is the first piece. Where is that question? Social versus what? Social paid versus social owned. Owned is organic. You can do whatever you want for free, but you're not really going to reach people. Paid social is much more effective if you know who you're targeting from a paid standpoint. If your messaging aligns, if they trust you, if they trust the value conversion. If they trust it, paid social is fantastic. You got to have context, right? So there's paid social and organic social. But really his broader question, Anthony's broader question is, should I be on social media to connect with the consumer or should I be on traditional? Traditional might sound like this, television, radio, mailers, print, door knocking. These are all traditional platforms that we connect with the personas in. And that's his question. So I'm a data-driven marketer. The first thing I'm going to tell you is the data doesn't lie. The data is going to tell you where the personas are. Data never lies. If you don't have the data, you can buy the data. You can ask the consumers that you currently serve for more data. That's free data. Okay. Where did your current consumers come from? Anthony, that's the question. Where are your current consumers? The customers you serve right now, where did they come from? I would say probably 90% are either previous customers or referrals from other customers. So referrals. So he's talking about an earned pillar. He earned the relationship through other people. So how do we increase earned? Or how do we start exploring and A-B testing other platforms? He's got a great business through retention right now. What he's missing is, hey, do you know what a million dollars looks like? It looks like this. That's what he's missing. He's missing attention and awareness. Now, what would Grant Cardone say? Which platform should you be on? What would Grant Cardone say? WWGC. WWGC. Omnipresence. Everywhere. All of them. All the time. I coach. I do these marketing workshops and Grant will come in and he's obviously the master market. Look, I'm classically trained. I like to say I'm classically trained. Like I worked with big brands. I built a little agency. You know, he is the behemoth in the room. So I don't try to compare myself to him, but I'll, I'll be teaching in a room and he'll say to me, he'll say, you guys learning a lot from Buck today. He'll come in the room and ask questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he doesn't know shit, right? <laughs> he loves to throw rocks at me. And he goes, no, Buck, Buck does know something. But the truth is, if you aren't omnipresent, if you don't take massive action, you're creating no success in your strategy. So it really is the level of, of intention and action that you put towards any of those platforms. So you can be omnipresent with no intention and action. You know, he, if, if, how many of you have read Be Obsessed or Be Average from Grant? That book changed my life. That book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, is a mind, ready? Three things. It's a mindset book. How to have the mindset to be obsessed or fall 
and to obscurity, to be average and to be stale. The second thing, it's a marketing book. It's a marketing book. He talks about the world's first video streaming platform. Who remembers it? Meerkat, I see your mouse moving. Meerkat, people said, Grant, don't do it. This platform's never gonna work. People don't wanna watch people live on video. Nobody wants to watch that. He says in Be Obsessed or Be Average that he took that platform and broke its spine. That's his quote, I broke its spine. I went all in, I was obsessed. And he became the number one meerkat video streamer in the world. And sure enough, just like everyone said, that platform went away. That platform, that platform went away. But guess what didn't go away? Relationships. Ah, we're back to the word relationships. Where did they go? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. 10 years of being obsessed and going all in on the thing and making it the thing. You have to be obsessed. How many of you are going to take the oath to be obsessed? No matter what platform you're going, any omnipresence, be obsessed or be average or be average. And then don't grow. So Anthony, I hope that answers your question. The data doesn't lie. Find the persona. When you come to a marketing workshop, we start to dissect that data. We start to take the data. We actually open up our CRM when we do a marketing workshop. We open it up and we show you all of our KPIs, how we track it, how we find consumers, how we grow and nurture relationships um, with consumers that we, that we you know, market to. So it's a, it's a great way to get more context to that question. Let's see. Let's, let's run to another question here. Uh, Joni. We'll go to, is it Joni? Joanna. Or I Joni, see. that's right. Hi, um, thank you. Yeah. Okay, my question is, I'm kind of going through, I, I finally had a breakthrough selling my products. I had free press in Women's World last month. And Congratulations. My sales, thank you so much. And my sales increased 500%. Boom. Love so, it. So now I'm in between. I have influencers coming. They want to promote my product for free. But I have my old labels because I ran out of everything. So do I pass up on that, that opportunity because my labels won't be in for like at least a month? Or do I just give them the old label with my product? Yeah, so it's a branding question is what you're asking yes. here. Um, yes. You know, so here's the first thing I love. I love influence. I love ambassadors because they drive a shorter sales cycle. They drive a shorter sales cycle. Why? Because we don't have to earn trust. They already have it with their community. That's why I like influence. Um, I worked on Starbucks, first influencer campaign ever. I hired Tyler Oakley, a Starbucks, a YouTuber. We paid him $300,000 to do a two, uh, two 30 second banner ads on YouTube to drive sales through his audience, through his influence. And we were targeting a very specific audience on YouTube in the LGBT community. And that's why Starbucks chose this influencer. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of process that goes through connecting an influencer and building the right brief for the influencer to execute on. So, you know, what is the brief that you're giving these, these influencers? You give them the product, they talk about the product then you expect that they drive attention and awareness. What's the first piece to the cycle? They drive what into the business? Flow, remember flow? They're gonna drive that flow into the business. Now, how are we tracking what they're doing? Are we collecting the data points of what they're doing so that we know how they're converting? So the first piece to this, uh, Joni, is I wanna make sure that you're setting up the influencers for success. The answer is yes, you're gonna do business with them, okay? Now, the, the, the question that you're asking me is, should I care that the label is a different label than the new label? Is the name the same? And the only thing that's different is the color? Is it yes. the design? The yeah, name then, is the same. Yeah, then you're going to do it. And let me tell you why. How old is your company? Eight years. Okay. And so in eight years, have you studied the data that says you've lost or gained customers based on the way your product looks? I gained Right. So my question is around consistency of that product. If you were putting a different product out and it was a different product, it was not consistent, you would lose trust in the consumer. But I imagine the product is the same. The look is a little bit different, right? Correct. 
Yeah, so I would say the answer is yes. You still move forward with this campaign and you might get creative around the brief with the influencers and how they showcase the product differently. And it's funny you say that because the influencer is pretty big and they're from the LGBT community, which is great. That's awesome. Well, right. I'm happy for you, Joni, and I appreciate you being on Owners Live tonight. Thank glad you that so we could, much. Yeah, glad that we could give you some value tonight. Let's go to Michael. He's got that SM7B Sure microphone. You know he's going to sound good tonight because he's got the process. How deep do you sound, Michael? Let's hear it. That's right, brother. We're coming through. Oh yeah, he's got that. He's got that yeah. SM7B. He's going That's tonight. Right. I like right. it. Okay, yo, how can I help yo, you? Hey, Buck, man, I just wanted to take a moment, do something that I don't think has been done enough here on 10X Owners Live. And uh, I just wanted to send you some love and say thank you for your effort, for what you do, for that clean ass that. haircut, brother, and uh, and for for really bringing huge value here for this amazing audience. And I appreciate so I just that. I got a lot of love for you, brother, as someone. Um, who's very close to this community. I just want to say thanks. That's all I got. Dude, I appreciate you, Michael. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Um, you know, I say this often, my personal purpose, like we have a purpose as a company to help you grow and scale, whatever it is that you're doing. My personal purpose, I love to teach. Like, I love this. This is so exciting to me to like, like if like the reason I like the 10X community is because no one here tonight out of the 450 that have shown up tonight. And by the way, we'll cycle through about 2000 business owners because you'll get five or 10 drop in and out based on what their plans or schedules are. So I love the teaching aspect. The 10X community is here because you all want to grow and scale and learn. No one here is like, I don't need that. I don't want to hear that. Everyone here just wants to absorb. So where there is a, a, a business owner who is in need and looking for advice, I will pour myself into that. I will make myself available for that business owner. But the second, so teaching, and the second thing that I love more than anything is watching you actually do it. It's great that I that somebody says, hey, thanks for your time. I appreciate you. The learning is so great. I do enjoy that. But what I enjoy more is when you come to me next Tuesday and you say, hey, 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 Buck, I want to mention something. You know that promote consistency equals trust. I got on and I started and Anthony says, I went on to these platforms. And I started promoting what I was doing, why I was doing it. Man, two people DM'd me. I closed this deal. It was worth a million dollars. I met three new people who I'm going to close in the next six months. Like I, that's what I, that's really what fills me up is when you guys take this, apply it and you come back to me and you explain how it's changed your life. Because at the end of the day, it isn't just revenue. You're changing your legacy for you, for your family, for the people who work for you, for communities. You know, I know many of you, it isn't just about the employees, for many of you, it's about the community that you serve. And so I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, let's, let's keep rolling on questions. We've got, we've got about 20 minutes left and that special uh, essentials workshop offer is coming up. Dr. N, what's up, my friend? Hey, thanks for uh, taking me, Buck. And uh, as I agree with Michael, I mean, yeah, Michael, that uh, we appreciate everything that you do, seriously. Always. This, dude, uh, you're, you're an inspiration. Thank so you, man. you, you, you talked about uh, data entry earlier. Yep. My data entry is different than the regular data entry. Of course, I'm taking patient notes and stuff. Sure. How do I incorporate patients or staff to do data entry to help them understand how the business has grown and escalated where we started? Such and the other part was, should I be, should I be looking at representative and stop doing paper clip click? Let's say for Google. I missed the first piece. Should I be doing what instead of PPC? Should I be hiring like a practice representative for the office to escalate to that next level uh, yeah, two, and help uh, bring in? Got it. Got it. Two great questions. Two great questions. The first one I'm going to bring in Heather to talk with because he's asking a people question. You see the way marketing and people start to connect together. He needs data entry. Some data entry is automated. We just went through this with a big construction group that we've been talking to. We just went through performance. 
some data entry is automated. As we scale and grow the company, we need that automation so that we can go from macro down to micro relationships. Big macro sets of audiences, qualify filter, qualify filter, qualify filter down to this, down to a relationship, just like that. But you, get, you have to automate the data down to that point. And that's why we need tech stacks and automation and performance. And that's why we need accountability. Okay, for those of you that are saying, I can't do this, I can't pass this point, I can't make this, I can't make this data entry work for me, I'm going to come back and start asking you questions about your tech stack. And you have to have accountability on building that out as an infrastructure for your business. But his specific question is around when it's manual data. So an MQL, an MQL is a marketing qualified lead. It's typically automated through digital. But sometimes you get a call and they say, hey, I'd love to come to Buck's marketing workshop. My sales team has to ask this question because it didn't come in through a conversion page. It came in on a call. Where did you hear about us? Oh, I think it was uh, like Owners Live or maybe it was a Facebook ad or like, oh no, now the data is dirty. Now the SQL, the sales qualified lead is dirty. So how do we get, how do we get our team to be inspired to help enter that data correctly so that the data in our company isn't dirty? Heather, do you want to give some pieces of advice on how we can align our people to, to do that appropriately? Am I frozen right now? My, so my internet's unstable. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Yes. So when it, so when it comes to aligning your people, first of all, you, when, when you, what he's talking about are these breakpoints. So eventually your tech stack gets to the point where data gets automated and you won't need to get there. But what you need to do first is help your team understand their impact on the business before you get to that big automation point. How are they financially impacting the business by making sure that that data is entered correctly or the question gets asked on the phone correctly or whatever that task is that needs to be done what is the significance from an impact standpoint a lot of people mind you aren't always money motivated by the way we talk about goals and you think oh i need to incentivize them like from a financial standpoint and they need to make more money but data entry isn't always tied to revenue growth in the beginning so what's most important is that people understand their significance in the process. Oh, so so true. you need so you need to be able to paint the picture of what is the financial alignment based on impact of that particular task. And I will tell you that to Buck's point, the significance is extremely high because if we don't have great data, we can't make great decisions. And if we don't make great decisions, we can't make the revenue we need or have the profitability that we need. And so if people can understand that even a data entry position may not be, you know, $150,000 a year roll, right? But the fact is, it is still a highly impactful position. And if they want to grow and scale with you, then they need to start here before we can get up here to automation. And if they are helping to make sure that the data is clean and it's and it's being entered properly and that we're making decisions based off this clean data, then there is going to be a point where the company will make the room from a revenue standpoint to in turn come back and either promote the individual if they've demonstrated their competencies technically and behaviorally, or there's going to be the ability for us to create an incentive plan that is based on their contribution above okay. their regular base pay and but you have to paint that picture if you don't paint that picture for them if they can't see it then they feel like they're in a transactional job as opposed to a forward moving career and so you need true. to make careers for your so people. true such a massive difference too when you've built a company and you've worked at a massive company when you work at a massive company or they always say you know the your desk job it just feels like you're just what do they say it feels like i'm just a number yeah just a number right because those jobs are transactional and so it's such a great point let's go to aaron and sarit with uh they said they got a great question so i'm excited that's quite a tease quite a tease hey buck hey 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 um i echo the thank yous as well oh of course you guys stop i don't i i don't i don't need it but i appreciate it Aaron. i am a middle child so you know you guys know I do, I do, I do actually need it. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure you can't get out of the doorway because you're. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. 
Um, okay, so Buck, if you owned your own business or if you were in Brandon's position and you were hiring your first marketing coordinator or marketing yes. person, what would you focus on in the first 30, 60, and 90 days with that? Person? Oh, that's such a good question. That's what such a great do? question. So, so th there's two parts to the question. The first answer is it depends on the breakpoint of the business. If you're in the early stages, then the first 30 days might be filled helping you build the fundamental platforms. If you're at a different breakpoint and the tech stack is already there, it's in optimizing and understanding all of the tech stacks and, and what's working and what's not working. Um, it depends on if you're currently, what strategies or platforms you currently have in place. It depends on what you're spending, what you're not spending. It depends on if your finance team is connected or not connected. So then let me just go 40,000 feet, 40,000 feet. You need as the owner, as the senior leader or owner, owner of your organization, to your point, if you own the company, you need to understand the business mechanics first. And what I mean by that is you don't have to be an expert marketer, but you have to understand the mechanics of what you need. You know you need the tech solution, the automation, the workflow solution. You know you need the owned, the paid, the earned strategy. Earned might be testimonials, Google reviews, paid is social, digital, PPC. Owned is blogging. Owned is mailers. Owned is cell phone, SMS, video messaging. Those are owned platforms, paid platforms, earned platforms. You need to understand those things. You don't have to execute. You don't have to be the expert. You can hire the experts, but you have to understand the process of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. And what's taking place when you hire that marketing project manager is you want to put in order of importance what needs to be built developed and executed. So you want to be putting those action items and in, in those windows. Now you, you get you can get really granular into technique. You can get into resource hours, um, but you want that person to be accountable and you want to have insight every single day on what is the what is the project and where, what is the milestones of that project and where are we at today? No day on my marketing team ends without us getting together and knowing exactly where we ended. And did we hit any roadblocks at the end of the day? This is the project from start to finish from a marketing standpoint. Our, our brand managers, you guys know a lot of our brand managers, you know, Bryce is a brand manager, you know, Camilla who does paid media with us, you know, our designers like Jay, we've got a lot of people in our marketing team. They know this is start to finish. Now, every day, there's something that needs to be accomplished inside that project. Every morning, we start with the priorities. At the end of the day, any roadblocks, did we finish it, did we not? And if they're roadblocks, how do we solve them so that we can get back on track? And so that's the key. You want to lay out the structure. Does that help answer the question? Yeah. Can I follow it up with another one? Yeah, of course. And of course, you guys know you can always catch up with me on our next chat and we can talk through the details. True, but I think this might be valuable for other people. Yeah, too. yeah, definitely. So, so then if we're talking about incentivizing people, what are the KPIs that you guys primarily focus on to incentivize um, somebody from the marketing team? Yeah, you ask, you guys ask such great questions. I, re I really enjoy your questions. That's a good question. And you're right, it's going to help people. So, uh, and this might be a good segue for us too, to go into the big marketing workshop offer, because we actually talk about marketing KPIs and incentives for our marketing team at the marketing workshop. We actually talk about that. There are so many KPIs. Those are key performance indicators. Those are data points that we study that drive the business. Some drive the business more than others. So to, to their question, which KPIs would you incentivize a marketing team on? Let's take a quiz really quick. Let's take a quiz. Likes. Do we, draw, do we want to incentivize to get more likes? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. No, we don't. Follows. More follows. Uh, Omar. Omar, you've been to my class. He knows. Shares. MQLs, SQLs, 
Abby knows. Abby knows. Conversions. We incentivize conversions. Now, you can weight incentive. The first piece is the first KPIs. I was giving you a couple, I was throwing out some tricks, some vanity metrics. Vanity metrics feel good. They feel good, right? Like, oh, I got a bunch of likes. I got a bunch of follows. And they're, they're important because they're, they're fortune tellers. Vanity metrics and marketing are fortune tellers. Oh, we're getting engagement and activity and follows and likes. Something could come of it if we do something with it. Follows mean nothing if they don't convert. If you don't develop a relationship, if it's the wrong person, if it's the wrong persona, what is a like if it's the wrong like? What's a follow if it's a wrong follow? That's why we don't incentivize heavily. We like it. It helps paint the future picture. We can see growth. We're expanding omnipresence, awareness, attention, all of those things. They're great. But at the end of the day, marketing's job, who knows marketing's job, number one job is to make money. That's right. David knows to make money. Number one job, conversion. So we are heavily incentivized. Our whole marketing team is like, if it was the right person on the right platform at the right time with the right message and the right value proposition, the right call to action and the right impact statement, they're going to be a customer and they're going to convert. If they don't convert, we didn't do our job. We did not do our job. So we like conversion. If you work with an agency that doesn't measure conversion, that's a bad agency. Yeah, but we reached 400,000 people. Fantastic. I have to feed my kids. Can I feed my kids off of reaching 400,000 people? No. Right? Yeah, but we had 30% more likes than last month. My kids are starving. <laughs> right? Like you can't, you can't incentivize vanity. You can only incentivize the close, the close, the right person connected. Right. So we're, we're getting close to the end. So I'm going to give you this offer. We're going to put the QR code up. Actually, actually, Bryce, can you put the number in the chat instead of the QR code? This is going to be so good that you can, you cannot schedule a call. You can only make the call right now. I'm going to give away to the next five, the next five that come to a marketing workshop, 4997 in Scottsdale or Miami, either one, personal one-on-one -on -one strategy session. A personal one-on-one -on -one private strategy consultation to the next five. But you have to call tonight. You can't schedule the appointment. Think about this. Ask your wife who's going to tell you no because you spend too much money and they don't trust you anymore, right? And this is a call now to take advantage, it's 503-536-0997. I wanna spend personal time with you. So for you making that personal commitment right now, for you saying, you know what? I'm gonna take the next step. I'm gonna take massive action. For you doing that, so here we go. So San Jose is up first. See, I get all the call. The sales team, they come to me first. That's where they come. San Jose is calling. Oh, there's three. Antonio, haven't you been, Antonio just called. You've already been to a marketing workshop, Antonio, but I'll still give you one-on-one -on -one marketing. It's for, for area code four, there's four, oh, someone from Wilmington, 302, 302, Wilmington. Okay, that's three, that's three, two left. There's two left. All right, guys, this has been fun. This has been fun. I enjoyed this. Hopefully, Brent, Providence, Rhode Island, who is it? giving everybody's phone number away. <laughs> um, this has been a great experience. I've really enjoyed spending time with you guys. And, you know, it helps me selfishly. When you tell me the challenges and issues you're going through, it helps me because I run into those same challenges and issues with so many different business owners. And I like to get the feedback of like the advice I gave you actually helped you and generated more revenue for you. So give me that feedback. Once you've taken any of the things that have helped you today, I want to hear how you've implemented it and what it's done for your business. Give me your best takeaways today over the last hour for Owners Live. What were your best takeaways in the notes? Before we turn it over, what were your best notes? Hey, Jared Ritter just put in literally all of the notes. If you guys scroll up, there it is again. Wow, there Jared, again. nice notes. Yeah. Promote profit, process, people, flow, conversion, retention. Being credible, transactional, transitional, transformational alignment. These are great. 
data never lies. I could go on for hours and hours, um, but you know, Brandon would he put me he put a stop to that. Employee, uh, uh, Katie says employee development, alignment, development, transition. Jeff, promote, promote, promote. Josh, there's the number again. Look at Josh is promoting. 503-536-0997. It's, a, it's the easiest investment on your business. Financial workshop, people workshop, marketing workshop. Come get the technique you need to master people, financial modeling, marketing. I want to help you. We want to help you. Heather, thank you for being so gracious and assisting me tonight. This was fun. I think Heather and I might have a podcast in the future. Would you guys listen? Oh, we so bad. Yeah, should we? Oh, look at that. There's look. This is good data. It was so much fun. Heather and I both love to hear ourselves talk. It would be 100%. a fantastic podcast. <laughs> well, I would totally come and listen to Heather. <laughs> All right. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to what I call the good looking Dawson, yeah. <laughs> Josh Dawson. Uh, back over to you. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, guys. The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now.